Was this all done on computers or how did you do this? No, no. Uh, it's done uh, by hand. By hand? <laughs> yes, under the press. These are all the prints. Frame it now. My signature. Frame it. That's right. So, what did you write for more? Good evening, everyone, and thank you for coming. So when I started looking for printmakers around the state, um, Orna's work really jumped out at me immediately. I hadn't even seen her work in person, but after seeing photos online and speaking to her, I knew she would be perfect for this series. Um, Orna has a background in chemistry and biology, as well as fine art, and received her BFA from the University of Houston. Um, I like to explain this exhibition as I've always gravitated toward abstract art, and it is sometimes hard for me to articulate just why. But Orna's work is one of the best visual explanations I can give for why I love non-representational art. Her two- and three-dimensional prints use many different materials and processes, and they really marry hard geometric shapes with warm, organic, and inviting forms and colors. It's impossible to stand still for too long in this exhibition. The work demands that you walk around and look at them from different angles. I think people are going to have pretty vastly different experiences in this exhibition. Some of you may find it invigorating. Um, some of you may find it challenging. I hope everyone walks out of the exhibition with an understanding of the natural forms that give her inspiration and how a particular object, like a tree trunk, can be revisited in so many new and exciting ways throughout an artist's career. Now I'm going to let her tell us a bit more about her inspiration and artistic process. So please join me in welcoming Orna Feinstein. Thank you, Wendy, for inviting me to do this exhibition here, and Brian. And thank you, Jenny, and Kristen, and you, who hung it so beautifully. Mm -hmm. And thank you for coming to listen to my talk. Uh, where do I start? <laughs> I guess in the beginning. Uh, the beginning for this body of work starts about 17 years ago, when I was starting uh, making a lot of drawings with the theme that was the tree trunk and especially the growth rings as you see when you cut the tree horizontally. I was also inspired by the lines that you see when you slice the trunk vertically. So between these circles and lines I found that the opportunities and the horizon are huge. I couldn't believe or wouldn't envision, you know, 17 years ago, what the work would look now. But uh, through the years, uh, the evolution happened. Um, so two years after making drawings and repeating the same theme, but every drawing was obviously different than the other, I started to make prints. I got into the print shop by accident and I didn't like it for the first two months, but after two months, things happened, and I loved the suspense and the mystery in printmaking. Uh, how many of you know how prints are done? Uh, okay, so maybe I should say a few words about prints, what are prints. The difference between a drawing and a print is basically that in paintings and drawings, you take your pencil or brush and you work directly on the paper or canvas. But in printmaking, you never work on the paper. You work on a plate. You create your image on plexi, on metal, on wood, on plastic, on, on leaf, on, on any material. You ink it and then you press that template with the paper and the ink gets transferred from the template to the paper. So what you get is two things. One, because you have a template, you can re-ink it and print again and get two of the same. And if you ink it again, you get three of the same. If you ink it again, you can make additions up to 700. 
And the other thing that's nice about frame making that is not achievable in drawing and painting is because you press the paper over the plate under a lot of pressure, you get special effects that are not uh, achievable uh, with drawing. So I was attracted to the second part of print making, but not the first one. I did not want to make hundreds of the same or dozens of the same. I enjoy making one of a kind print. So everything that you see is one of a kind. The theme is still the same, but each work was done uh, inking plates in different colors, different shape, and printing again and again uh, layers of ink, but creating a new print. So we'll start in the beginning. The first prints that I made were these uh, prints from the Ring series, where I used material like plastic netting to create the plate. And uh, inking the plexiglass and placing the netting over the plexi and putting the paper over and pressing it, you get this image. Then I repeat with different colors and different size rings to get this look. This is a ring series that I started in 99 and it's still going. And I have probably more than 350 different prints from this series alone. As I work on one series, I have ideas for another series. So from this series, there was another series, the branch and rooted, that nothing is uh, on display here because it's a totally organic series and these are more the geometric uh, work. But then when I have two series, I work on two series. And when I have three series, I may work on three series or two series or one series. So it's an ongoing thing for me to work on this series. When I started with printmaking, as I told you, I was not attracted to, to work in the studio there because the tools and the look of the shop is very traditional and I really wanted to do something really contemporary and new. So relatively quickly, I decided to innovate in the field and to try and break all the rules. So everything that I learned, I did the opposite. Some <laughs> things worked and many things didn't work. <laughs> but I was determined to experiment and move forward with any idea that I had, even though I made a mess, you know, and ruined the blankets. So those of you who know these are expensive blankets that go on the press. But I kept going and, and really found my way by trial and error and, and keep inventing and thinking of what else can I do. So the thing that attracted me the most to invent in the field was to make the prints more dimensional. So after two years, I started to print on paper and crumple it and then collage it on top of the prints and I achieved like, you know, half an inch depth. And when that wasn't enough, I started to print on fabrics and created maybe an inch depth and that was pretty good, but still not enough. And, and one day I thought that maybe I should work on plexiglass because this way I can really have spacer in between the layers and create more depth. So the first pieces that I've done were the yellow pieces when you enter the gallery, that yellow piece. You can see that I printed on two plexes and when they hang one, you know, over the other with space, they create depth and also movement. Another. Uh, element that I achieved by doing that. So then I was thinking, okay, these are two layers. What if I do three or four or five? And to print on plexi was a real challenge because very few people do that, if at all, and I'm not, you know, nobody teaches how to do it. So I had to invent my way through this. And again, I had a lot of problems to overcome. And when that was successful, I was happy. But then when I had to add more layers to the yellow piece, I said, wow, that becomes a really challenge to hang on the wall. And that's when this happened. I decided to take it off the wall and put it on a pedestal. So I had to you know, commission a metal guy to do the space sails and the flexi guy. You know, have to drill it in the right places, the holes, so everything will work. Everything was a challenge, but eventually it worked. And then when this happened, I said, well, what if I go larger? 
and see what happens then. And that piece was born. <laughs> I, I had to, to again, go to metal, different metal guys that, you know, that can do all this uh, work. And uh, usually when I do the prints, I do not know the end result. I love the process, you know, to, to work intuitively. And the end result comes, and I'm either pleased or not, but at least I have this uh, suspense through the making. But with the sculptural pieces, found myself needing really to plan because I can't go to somebody and just give me an idea. It, it's my work. So I have to be in dimensions, sizes, where are the holes, where are the screws, you know, so everything works. So there is not much surprise in this. The things that are surprising, though, are the effects that I'm getting because I cannot tell ahead of time what happens. So, for example, on the twisted piece, because the piece is so large, I get another effect, not only movement when you go around it, but also reflection from one piece of flexi to the other. And these are things that are happening, happening naturally in this kind of material, but things that I will, you know, not expect or not know that will happen. As well as, you know, in the front of the plexi, I don't know if you noticed, but the edges of the plexi also show some color. Even though I did not paint or do anything about the edge, if you look around, you see the color of the printed image on the edge also. So, so after this piece, I said, OK, I, I wanted to go bigger and more grandiose and see what else can I do with this plexi and the print uh, material now that I can print on the plexi. And I started to make uh, installations. The piece behind us, uh, in front of me, right here with the board, with the domes. Uh, so this is another thing. Once I started to print on the plexiglass, I created uh, more patterns and effects that uh, attracted me to explore them even more. So again, I had to go to another plexi guy and, and instruct him to to build me those domes. And then, as it turns out, you know, depending on how uh, deep the dome is, you know, I get different effects. And uh, building these uh, installations uh, was very challenging because it's large and it's a lot of lines and a lot of movement. So working with it is really busy sometimes. <laughs> so, <laughs> So the first installation I did like 15 feet high, and we, we were walking two people for 12 hours, going up and down the ladder, and I felt so dizzy that I was uh, determined not to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> to make it in like a modular uh, uh, pieces, you know, so I can uh, pick it up and move it to another place and not have to walk again 12 hours uh, <laughs> and get it dizzy myself. I want to talk a little bit about this series because uh, the seeds and seductions here. It's uh, also another step that I took when I started to work on this series. It's a hand colored monoprint. So what I do is I first print the, it's not really a grid, but I print the lines over the paper and it creates these waves and uh, white areas and dark areas, and again, the red pattern is created because the plexiglass in this piece is also printed on lines, so it creates a lot of movement. But in the other three, I didn't put it because I felt that you know, not every piece has to visit the viewer, <laughs> so I, I left it alone. But uh, working on the piece is a very, Challenging, I would say challenging, because I had color in between the lines, and you know, I cannot make a mistake because if I make a mistake, that's the end of the piece. So, uh, and also, you know, it's also visually challenging. You know, when you look at it, when you walk on it, it's challenging. This piece on the left here, yes, to me has a regularity. Maybe that was the intention. Now the piece to the right has a wonderful random swirl to right. like a pond of water that just couldn't be disturbed. Right. How do you come to this? 
How did I come see a giraffe? Giraffe's head, did you come see it? <laughs> okay, so since I talked to you about the evolution of the <coughs> concept to go from 2D flat to 3D and then the, the process of printing on different material and coming to, to these are the latest works, then yeah, I can tell you. In the beginning, when I started to print on fabrics, I used fabrics that were either see-through, like in the red piece. The red piece is a see-through fabric with black lines over it. So I print on the fabric and on the paper, and then I stitch them together so it looks like one thing. You can't even really see from far that it's fabric. The other fabric that I liked was this one, the green one. There are regular holes. Okay, there was a very repeated pattern with the openings on the fabrics. And I need these openings because I want to show what's underneath the opening. So I started working like this, but then when I ran out of the fabric, I had to think, okay, I cannot have this fabric, but maybe I can laser cut the paper to create these openings so I can see what's behind it. So that's when this uh, print came about. The, the round circles are laser cut on the paper. But now when I have, I also order it in you know, a bigger hole so I can see more what's going underneath. And then what happened, I said, okay, so now because the holes are big and you know, I experiment with things, I said, I don't need to print behind the paper to show what's behind. I can print on the paper, and I can print on the plexi, and I can put a fabric behind the paper. Because here, the fabric is in front of the paper, or another fabric. And here, I reversed it. So the fabric is on the back. So this fabric has a lot of movement, and this one is very static. And that, that uh, effect comes from the fabric. Mm. Yes. Um, when I'm here, I, I, I am, I'm reminded of some of the earlier uh, op art that we had back in the 60s. Right. And so are you influenced by some of those earlier artists? I'm very much influenced by Victor Vassarelli and Brigitte Riley. Yes. Uh, I knew it. I knew Definitely. It. Uh -huh. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but uh, yeah, you can see the influence, but it's really... I'm more about organic geometries and not about geometry per se yeah. or, or the optical illusion. For me, it's like I'm looking for how do I portray movement that exists in nature, how do I bring it to art? So I'm after that. Not uh, The intention is not to busy you or not to create uh, that. The intention is to create a uh, to copy nature in an artistic way. <laughs> An homage <laughs> to the tree. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Right. What particularly inspired the piece with the plexi coming out from the wall? Um, <coughs> so when I started printing on plexiglass, when you start something new, everything comes in like steps. I mean, when I came to this, it, I wasn't dreaming and one day I woke up with this. Before I did this, I did the yellow piece. Before I did the yellow piece, I did this piece. Because here, you know, I had the technique, I invented the technique how to print on plexi. So I printed on plexi and then I had pieces of printed plexi. So I made the installation. Then I added two plexis and I got the yellow piece and then I added <laughs> many and I got this. So it was, that was the, the process. And uh, I think what's nice about this exhibition, like I never had it before, is that you really can see the evolution in the, in the process, not only the concept, but <coughs> the process. So you can see the step, how I came to this and this and that. Okay, and if we have any more questions, or just gonna stick around for a 